the church's liturgical calendar, we start this weekend, the ordinary time period. We finished the hustle and bustle of Christmas and we're ready to move on to bigger and better things. Of course, we're having a storm here uh, coming up, so I promise I will try and make this as short as possible so you can get ready for the uh, blizzard of Kentucky of one to two inches in the next couple days. However, what's beautiful is that you come to Mass. You come to Mass to be attentive to the Word of God. You come to give worship to God as Samuel did in the temple. He was sleeping where the Ark of the Covenant was, right? But as we heard, Samuel was not familiar with the ways of the Lord just yet. Like us, Samuel was afflicted as far as he was in a world, a world that was not prioritizing God. There was a lot of busyness, but Samuel had been chosen, chosen as a prophet, chosen by God to lead people and ultimately to anoint Saul king, the first king of Israel. But Samuel was not familiar with the Lord, and so we identify with him because we too have a lot of things going on in our life. Christmas is over, but boy, your life has not gotten easier or less busy. It's gotten more busy. But like Samuel, it's important for us to stay attentive to the Lord, to learn the ways of the Lord, because we are his chosen people. We have been baptized, confirmed. You receive Holy Communion. You live a Catholic life. We have to stay attentive to his word. And so for us who are in the hustle and bustle of life, for us who are distra have many distractions potentially in our life, we need the word of God to help us. Because like Samuel, who was not familiar, we may mistake the voice of God. Three times God called Samuel, but he went to Eli, the pro to the priest, and said, Here I am. You called me. What do you need? Is there a chore I need to do in the middle of the night? What's going on, Eli? Go away. I didn't call you. Three times the Lord called him, and then Eli realized before that third time, it's the Lord's voice. It's the Lord's voice that we should be attentive to. And it's okay for babies to cry. It's no problem. God is the one who is speaking to us, and we need to be attentive to him and his word. In the midst of the cacophony, the chaos of life, we need to be familiar with him. So like Samuel, we too have on our lips those words of Eli. When the Lord calls us, when the Lord speaks to us, we should respond. When he calls out, Samuel, Samuel, Andy, Andy, we should say, speak, Lord. For your servant is listening. The hard, really, really hard part and the hard truth is most of us, if we're honest with ourselves, we flip that script. We change it to, listen, Lord, your servant is speaking. We want to control things. We want God to listen and do what we want. Listen, Lord, I'm talking. Hello. When really... The actions of the saints, Samuel today, show us we need that docility of spirit. We need to listen. We need to allow the Lord to speak to us. And it's a lifelong process. It's a journey of faith. This takes a lifetime because there's so many things pushing and pulling at us and so much chaos and confusion and a lot of talking in the world. It's hard to know who to listen to. But the truth of the matter is St. Ignatius of Loyola, he tells us that when the Lord is speaking to us in the discernment of spirits, the fruits of the spirit will be what comes about. When you listen to the Lord, it should bring you joy, peace, hope, faith, chastity. When you listen to the devil, it's the opposite. Chaos, confusion, fear, not knowing what to do. 
When the Lord is speaking, he brings us peace because that's ultimately what he told us at the end of the story when he was resurrected and he was talking to his own apostles in the upper room. He manifested himself to them and he says, peace be with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives, but my peace I give to you. Not the peace of the world, but my peace. And this is the peace that Andrew, James, and John, and Peter encountered in our Holy Gospel. First, Andrew and John, who are with John the Baptist. And they are docile. They're listening. This man in camel's hair eating wild locusts and honey, if you will. This man, this voice crying in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. It intrigued them. They were tiptoeing closer to him. To know, was he the Elijah that was prophesied that would come before the Messiah? They were ready. They were attentive. They knew the voice of the Lord was close. So they were prepared. Prepared for that day when John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God. And they leave. In our Holy Gospel, they leave John. They leave the trailer and they get to the movie. They get to the real thing. And they follow him, still tiptoeing, still creepily behind him. And Jesus turns around and he says, what are you seeking? Who? how many times has God asked you that? What are you seeking? Because now the Lord's listening to what you want. But it took docility. It took them ready, being ready. It took them attentive for the word of God to be spoken to them, to bring them that peace, to bring them that excitement, that joy, then they follow him. They say, Rabbi, they start with teacher. Show us, show us what, 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 where are you staying? And Jesus says, come and see. Because God always says that. When you go to him with our difficulties, our problems, when you answer that question honestly. What are you seeking? The Lord invites you to intimacy with him. Come and see. Come closer. No more trepidation. No more fear. No more confusion. No more talking. You're going to follow me now. You're going to listen to me. Listen to my words. Let me reveal the Father to you. Let me forgive you of your sins. Let me make up for what is lacking in your life. That's what Jesus is all about. That's what this Sunday is all about. So I heard it said, and I'm going to conclude with this. What do we do? What do we do? What now? How do I live this out? This discipleship, this following of Jesus. There's a professor in Atchison, Kansas at Benedictine College. Uh, His name's Tom Hoops. And he said in his reflection for today, this great, great meditation. He said, what do I do? He says, now what happens is the priest will turn to you and say, behold the Lamb of God. Just as John the Baptist did, the priest will tell you, behold the Lamb of God. And we're going to get up and walk towards the Lamb of God. Just like the first apostles did. We should ask the questions that they asked. We should seek the things they were seeking. We should Listen to the words of God. Listen to the answers that they listened for. And as you come in the communion line, pray silently in your heart. Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. And after communion, when you get back to the pew and you're kneeling down, you can pray. Speak, for your servant is listening, Lord. And when he's asking you, what are you looking for? Answer him honestly. Give him everything. Don't hold anything back. No more fear, no more confusion, no more chaos. The Lord has the answer. He is the answer. He's told us he's the way, the truth, and the life. And he wants to show you the answers to your questions by speaking heart to heart to you in the union that he invites you to today. So let that be our prayer as we receive him in his body, blood, soul, and divinity here at this Mass and at every Mass his union with you, his beloved disciple, in whom he is well pleased.